congratulations. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to start the service with some worship. Um, so, Lord Jesus, um, thank you for waking us up this morning. And I pray that we would um, be true worshipers of you this morning. Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Amen. Please stand. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. And oh, praise Him. Hallelujah.
good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome to Incarnation Tallahassee. This is going to be a unique service that you just stepped in because not only do we have Bishop Neil back after just having been with us a, a few weeks ago, um, but there's going to be many baptisms and confirmations, so you'll have a chance to uh, sort of be a part of people's holy wedding party in that sense this morning, and so we want to encourage you to enter into the liturgy in that way. Also, Deacon Irma is out, but we're pleased to have Deacon David Alford serving in the liturgy uh, with us for the first time this morning, so praise the Lord for that. Um, I know I was out last week, and Fumi had COVID last week, and all this sort of stuff, so um, I'm glad you guys still had a good time worshiping the Lord and that the Holy Spirit moves, you know, regardless of whether any of the normal people are here. Amen. Um, uh, Bishop Neal is going to start us um, with our liturgy on page two. And for those who are online, this will be a little different than you're used to as well. Hang on tight. This comes from Joel and the book of Acts. The Lord will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your old men shall dream dreams. You shall know that the Lord is in the midst of his people. That he is the Lord and there is none else. And it shall come to pass. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your providence that your church may joyfully serve you in quiet confidence and godly peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Galatians, chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit against to, or again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the, the, for the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Be to God. 
Okay. Um, so for those who aren't here, last week we have a new song setting. Um, the way we're going to do it, Claire is going to lead us into, um, we're going to do spoken verses. So she'll lead us in the first verse, and then there's a congregational response. So lyrics will be up on the screen. kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, and open in us the gates of your kingdom. The kingdom of God is justice and Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer nor take, take the, the names, names of their, their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will, I will bless, bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will, you will show, show me the path of life. In your presence there is, there is fullness, fullness of joy, and, and in your, your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy. And just before we do this gospel lesson, I just want to explain this tradition that we do every Sunday. I know we have a lot of visitors and maybe are wondering, what are some of these weird things that are going on? Um, well, every Sunday, um, the deacon uh, processes the gospel into the midst of the people as a sign of Jesus Christ, who is the word made flesh, coming and dwelling in our midst. And so, so that's what we're, we're symbolizing is uh, Jesus coming down from heaven and taking on human flesh and dwelling in our midst for our salvation. And, uh, and so there's a lot of other things that will be going on this morning that you'll be like, what the heck is that? And we might not be able to explain them all, um, but there's a beautiful gospel-based symbolism in all these things that we're doing in this service. Would you stand for the gospel procession? I got a river of life flowing out of me. 
makes the lame to walk and the blind to see opens prison doors sets the captives free i got a river of life flowing out of me spring up a well within my soul spring up a well and make me whole spring up a well and give to me that life abundantly The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory be to you, Lord Christ. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will go follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well. Within my soul, spring up, O well, and make me whole. Spring up, O well, and give to me that life abundantly. Amen. You may be seated. And as Bishop Neal comes up to preach to you this morning, um, I just want to say uh, it's been one of the treats since we started planting this church. John and I, we were much uh, closer to being young men back at that point. Now we're, I think, getting middle-aged at this point. Uh, but we always said it's nice for us as young pastors for you to know that there's someone with gray hair that has authority over us and someone we love very much. And so... Um, uh, as you may know, Bishop Neal is actually um, retiring as our diocesan bishop. We'll still find all kinds of ways to get him to keep him busy throughout the province after that, but uh, but in in August he will retire as our diocesan bishop. He's had a special relationship with this church, not least because he has sons and daughters and grandkids here, but also because he has spiritual sons and daughters, including me. Bishop Neal has been a spiritual father to me since long before I was ordained. I'm very grateful for him, very grateful to hear the word of God from him this morning. Reminding me of things. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, not yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got right. something for the kids that I want to share. That's what I thought. This is the thing when you have all, all, all your uh, first team out, you got the backups, okay? And uh, the backups don't always know what they're doing. Um, so I am supposed to give the children's message.
message this morning. And so I would like all children to just look up for just a moment, because I know you're going to go to a brief children's service this morning before baptisms, but we're going to get you back in here real quick, um, because we want you to see the baptisms, because something that's, there's something going on this morning that's amazing, okay? So from the beginning, um, from the beginning of the church, when new people have put their faith in Jesus and they've wanted to come in relationship with him, the way that that's happened was not by the apostles saying, all right, everyone bow your, eye, bow your head and close your eyes and raise your hand if you want to come to know Jesus. No, it didn't happen that way. I love that somebody raised their hand. Yes. <laughs> it didn't happen that way. It happened by those who wanted to uh, be followers of Jesus to be baptized in water. Okay, so this morning, we're going to get to see, I don't know, it's like nine or ten people get baptized in water. And um, what happens when people are baptized is we unite ourselves with Jesus. So here's Jesus, here's us, and we say, we want to have the same destiny as you, Jesus. So when we go down in the waters in baptism, it says in Romans chapter 6, it's like we're being buried with Jesus in his death. That's what it says in Romans chapter 6. So all of our own sins go under the water. And then when we're raised up, we're being raised up with Jesus in a resurrection like his. So we're uniting ourselves with Jesus so that when, when we go under the water, our sins stay nailed to the cross. Jesus died. And when we come back up from the water, we're newborn babies in Christ. Even if we're 80 years old and we're getting baptized for the first time, we're newborn babies in Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, um, I know not all of you kids, some of you kids have been baptized already. Not all of you kids are going to have a chance to be baptized today. Um, but, um, but for those of you who aren't being baptized today, there's a special way, um, and this is, a, this is a very old tradition in the church, that we all participate in this. And um, uh, what, what we're going to do after the baptism, when the offertory song is happening... I'm going to scoop some of the baptismal water, and I'm going to go down with this, with this uh, uh, implement here, and I'm going to go around, and I'm going to flick this on everybody. I'm going to flick some baptismal water on everybody. So what we're, what we're saying with that is we're saying, well, the power that the Holy Spirit is bringing into these people's lives who are being baptized, we want a little bit of that too. We want a little taste of that. So when I go around, kids, and I flick you with a little water, you don't want to duck. You actually want to make sure that a bunch of it hits you, right? Because this is, this is a symbol of the power of God that comes into our life by baptism. Amen? Amen? All right. So children, why don't you stand and I'll say a prayer for you. Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing and heritage of all these children. Lord, we thank you for the children who are watching online uh, where there's sickness or travels today. And uh, Lord, we pray um, that whether they're baptized or not, um, whether they know you or not, Lord, that all the children in this church would be raised in the knowledge and love of you and, um, and unite themselves to the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so children ages four through fifth grade are now released for a brief children's church. It's great to have so many children that it takes a while for them to wander out. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, you have spoken through your word. We are people in need of hearing from you. We ask now that your word would come alive to us, that our hearts would be uh, changed, our thinking would be changed, that we would be more ready to be your followers and look like your children in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Well, it is great to be back. It was, it's kind of unexpected, as, as uh, Taylor hinted at. I was here at the end of last month. But several of the people who are being baptized today were not well and couldn't be here. And rather than waiting indefinitely for that to take place, I realized I had a free Sunday today. I'm just coming back from a marriage retreat that my wife and I were helping to lead. Uh, so, uh, I'm, and that was up in Georgia, so I'm still trying to figure out where I am. But I'm glad to be back, glad to be with all of you. I'm going to ask you to turn to Luke 9. Uh, we're going to start in the 53rd verse. So I know that takes a minute, and you know, if it's a phone, you've got to push the right buttons and all of that. Luke 9. One of the things that fascinates me as I'm watching movies or TV is the ability of a makeup artist to take someone and make them look like someone else. Uh, a good example recently is there have been several films uh, and, uh, about Winston Churchill and taking actors who looked very little like Winston Churchill and somehow turning them into Win Winston Churchill. If I had to pick one person I wouldn't want to look like, it would probably be Winston Churchill. <laughs> and you can think of a whole bunch of them, but it's a, remarkable the transformation that takes place. I'm, I want to use the image of a makeup artist, somebody who has the ability to change someone's appearance to look more like someone else. And, and I want us to realize that in a deep sense, what is going on in us, if we're followers of Jesus, is that we are being made to look like Jesus, not outwardly, but in terms of character, in terms of understanding, in terms of perspective, in terms of relationship with the Father. We could say in a way that Jesus himself is the makeup artist, taking us and changing us to be like him. But in order to be a makeup artist, Jesus is also a shake-up artist. He does that a lot. It was for Fumi, but he's not here. What can I say? <laughs> he is constantly shaking things up in our lives in order to get our attention, in order to capture our imagination, and in order to transform us to be like him. And what we're seeing in the Gospel reading in Luke 9 is four sets of disciples that Jesus is shaking up. Four sets of marks of what it means to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus is to not be someone who takes vengeance. We'll see all of these. To be like Jesus is someone who's willing to have a loss of comfort. To be like Jesus is to be willing to be misunderstood by the culture. And to be like Jesus is to let go of control over our own schedule, our own time. We're going to see all those quickly this morning. I want you to be thinking about them. There's too much in this sermon for you to take it all home. So I want you to be listening to one thing for you out of what I'm saying, one thought that you need to hold on to. I don't know what it is. I'm trusting the Holy Spirit. We'll show you what it is. First of all, Jesus is in the area of Samaritan, uh, Samaria, but the people there, it says in 953, do not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. Why does that matter? Because the Samaritans hated the Jews generally, and vice versa, the favor was returned. And the fact that he's going to the center of the, the capital city of the Jews is enough to make those in Samaria prejudiced against him. They don't receive him. They don't welcome him. And then it says, when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Now you think about that, what's going on there? Well, there's an Old Testament story behind it. There's a moment at which the king of Samaria sends troops to capture Elijah, uh, who's done nothing wrong. He's just spoken the truth that the king doesn't want to hear. And Elijah calls down fire from heaven, and they're destroyed. It actually happens twice. The third time a group is sent, the captain says, please, don't let that happen to us. Please have mercy on us. And instead, Elijah follows them back and addresses the king uh, directly. 
So they're thinking, here's, this is like that. This is a situation like that. You know, they're dissing Jesus. That's like the way in which they were against Elijah. So it's not like they were crazy. They were actually trying to live out what they understood of the scriptures. But look what it says in verse 55. But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Now, we don't know exactly what he said, but I'll give you a hint. If back in Luke 6, he says, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If you're going to look like me, you're going to look like that. No vengeance for Christians. Is there someone in your life whom you've given yourself permission to treat like an enemy? We saw a list of the parts of our sinful nature in Galatians, and one of the word there is a word, one of the words there is a word we rarely use. It's enmity. What does that mean? It means having an enemy and hating them. And, and Paul identifies that as part of our old nature, our sinful nature, enmity. Enmity. If you're in the midst of enmity, ask the Lord to help change your attitudes and your behavior. The next thing we notice as another disciple comes up is that Jesus wants us to let go of the concept of comfort. His disciple says, I will follow you wherever you go. And essentially, what Jesus is responding to is the wherever. He's saying to him, wherever, wherever, well, let me tell you what it's going to be like. Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, verse 58. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. The wherever, wherever's are going to be tough, and they're not going to be comfortable. I like these words from John Piper. It's the, from his introduction to, of a book he wrote about William Wilberforce, who helped end slavery, and John Newton, who wrote Amazing Grace. And uh, it's a, quite a remarkable book, The Roots of Endurance. But he said this at the beginning. Piper said this. He said, there's a mindset in the prosperous West that we deserve pain-free, trouble-free existence. When life deals us the opposite, we have a right not only to blame somebody or some system and to feel sorry for ourselves, but also to devote most of our time to coping so that we have no time or energy left over for serving others. Piper goes on to say, this mindset gives a trajectory to life that is almost universal, namely, away from stress and toward comfort and safety and relief. He goes on to say, then churches grow up in this mindset, and it never occurs to anyone such a community of believers that choosing discomfort, stress, and danger might be the right thing, even the normal biblical thing, to do. I have found myself in conversation with Christians for whom it is simply a given that you do not put yourself or your family at risk. This commitment to com safety and comfort is an unquestioned absolute. That's worth looking at. Jesus is saying, no, that's not the way it's going to be for disciples. It struck me as we're doing the baptisms for the Kogan family. If you want an example of somebody who is not aiming toward comfort in their lives, it would be this family. I heard the story of them rescuing orphans from Ukraine, bringing them in, primarily into Poland, but elsewhere. Do you think it was difficult? Oh, yes. Do you think it was dangerous? By all means. They did not have comfort as a high goal for their family, and neither should we. Jesus doesn't want us to. So no vengeance for Christians, no seeking of comfort. Third thing to note is that we are going to be misunderstood by our culture. Now, it's a little hard to pick this up. Let me explain it a little bit. Somebody says to Jesus, first let me go bury my father. And your first reaction is, well, that's a reasonable request. Until you know the culture. The culture in the time of Jesus is that someone would die, you would lay their body in a tomb, and you would literally let it rot. And then after time, usually a year or so, 
once it was, all the flesh had rotted away, all that is left is the bones. When it says, bury my father, he's saying, I'm waiting to bury the bones. In other words, this could be some amount of time. It would be a normal thing for children to do. But he might have been sticking around for as much as a year. So what's Jesus' response to that? It looks cruel, but the fact is that Jesus doesn't have much time less left. It says he's already set his face toward Jerusalem. If you want to be my follower, you've got to get on board now. So he says, let the bed, dead bury the dead. What's the implication? The implication is that that cultural value of how to do burial, which incidentally is not a biblical command, it's just the way their culture does it, that cultural valley does not necessarily bring life. Not all cultural values bring life. So he's basically saying you have a choice of being wrapped up in your culture, dead among the dead, or walking with me alive among the alive. Now, it's kind of an interesting moment in our history. What with the reversal of Roe versus Wade, and I'm not going to say much about it except to say that there is good news that it's no longer a national right to abort a child. But at the heart of the outcry is a deeper problem. It's a problem of autonomy. The idea that my rights as an individual trump everyone else's rights, including children. And it's a major value in our culture that my rights come first. We are radical individualist. There's a new book out called Strange New World by Carl Truman. And in the introduction, a man named Ryan Anderson says this, talking about our view of autonomy, our view of individualism. He says, this modern self, then, is not accountable to the theologians who preach on how to conform oneself to God, but to the therapists who counsel how to be true to oneself. Do you hear that? Let me say it again. This modern self, this is the self we're surrounded with, this is major values in the culture, is not accountable to theologians who preach on how to conform oneself to God, but to the therapists who counsel how to be true to oneself. That's a radical clash of understanding. Now, one court decision will not end that view of autonomy. That view of all our individual rights, our individual freedoms, our unencumbered self, as someone called it. But it is an opportunity for us as Christians to demonstrate love concretely, concretely to women who have been misguided or desperate enough to consider abortion. This is an opportunity for the gospel. We don't come down as Pharisees, but as we come in as people with the love of Christ. So no vengeance, discomfort as a disciple. We're going to be living contrary to the culture. And finally, look at the last disciple. Verse 61. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So what's the issue here? I thought I was going to coin a word, and then I looked it up, and it's been around since 1674. That was really disappointing. The issue here is nowness. What are you doing now? What are you doing in this moment? And the problem here is that opening phrase when he says, let me first. In other words, let me de define what's going to happen now. And Jesus sees a deeper issue. Who rules your calendar? Because life, we talk about giving our lives, but lives are measured in time. That's how you measure a life. Will we let Jesus control our time and hence our life? The major problem here is the let me first. Let me set the calendar. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who died after his efforts to 
uh, end Hitler's reign, uh, a, uh, a pastor in Germany said this as he considered this passage. He said, this last disciple makes himself available but retains the right to set his own conditions. I like this line. He said, it is obvious that at that moment, discipleship stops being discipleship. Discipleship stops being discipleship when we set the order of priorities. Let me give you one practice that's been helpful to me. There's a wonderful book, I recommend it, called The Ten Second Rule by a man named Claire de Graff. Claire, C-L-A-R-E, not a name we're usually familiar with for a man, but with that spelling. The 10 second rule is simple. When Jesus nudges you to do something by the Holy Spirit, you have roughly 10 seconds to decide to do it. And the graph says this, here was God himself and Jesus Christ inviting all who would enter his kingdom to abandon comfortable Christianity, to abandon the common sense I prize so highly, the very thing that governed my life, leave it at the door, he was saying. I'll meet you at the foot of the cross where your old life will end and the new life I'll give you will begin. I'll issue new instructions from there. Trust me and come follow me. And then he goes on to say, when you're reasonably certain Jesus is asking you to do something, do it immediately, hence the 10 seconds. Waiting just gives you a chance to overthink these impressions from God, giving doubt and fear an immediate opportunity to ask their questions and whisper their advice. Now, not all interruptions are important, but I will say that most important opportunities for the gospel come in as interruptions. And he tells some wonderful stories. I won't, I'll just outline quickly uh, a, a woman who has got two kids in a uh, shopping cart checking out. She's looking around because the third one is wandering the store and she doesn't see him. She gets hands in her card to pay for the food, and the card is declined. Starts digging in the purse, looking for a way to uh, pay for what's already gone through the scanner. And the woman behind her notices all of this, hands the uh, checkout person her credit card, says, I'll take care of this. And when the mother begins to object, she says, no, I'll take care of this. I'll watch the children. You go get the other kid. And at the end of it, the young woman who was in her 30s, turns to the older one and says, why did you offer to pay for my groceries? And I love this response. She said, I'm a Christian. As I stood behind you, I sensed that God was telling me to pay for your groceries. So I did. Simple as that. Since everything I have belongs to God anyway, he paid your bill, not me. Just thank him if you like. I hope you have a great day. And with one last smile, the woman turned and left. The 10 second rule. One of the major problems I have in my life is I have in my mindset that I can obey, but I don't have to do it right now. I can wait to obey. It happens to me every time I have a time alone with the Lord. I get distracted by something else, and if I follow down that rabbit trail, then by the time I'd actually open the scriptures to be in prayer, something else has come up and the time is gone. Let me first. So four marks of discipleship. No vengeance, no enmity, and no enemies. To face into discomfort, pain, and stress. To be willing to resist non-biblical cultural values wherever they come up. With grace, but with clarity and obey now when possible. This will lead to a continual death to self and a transformation to be more like Jesus, to be transformed into his image. Look at, at well, listening to Galatians 5, let me just say this quickly from the passage you heard before. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law, no law. That's what it looks like to be like Jesus. 
But he goes on to say, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You can't get to peace, lo uh, peace, love, joy, patience without a crucifixion of the other stuff that has to go. C.S. Lewis put it this way. Christ says, give me all. I don't want so much of your time and so much of your money and so much of your work. I want you. I have not come to torment your natural self, but to kill it. That's what Paul is saying here. One final thought. Think of Jesus on the cross. Jesus following the Father. Jesus, not only our Savior, not only paying for our uh, sins, but also our example. There's no vengeance on the cross. What does he say? Father, forgive them. There's nothing comfortable about the cross. Excruciating pain, but on top of the physical pain is the emotional and spiritual pain of experiencing being cut off from the Father because our sins are on him, cut off from the Father. Was he contrary to culture? Absolutely. They were expecting a Messiah who was going to come and get rid of their enemies, not a Messiah who'd be crucified telling his followers to love their enemies. And Jesus did not put off the cross. Beginning of the gospel passage in Luke, he set his face toward Jerusalem. The time is coming. He didn't say later, or maybe never. He marched on a death march for our sake, ending at the cross. We're following that Lord. We're becoming like that Jesus if we're following him. All out of love. He did all those things out of love for us. We will not be perfect disciples, but we are disciples who are being perfected. We can know, go, go forward knowing that Jesus loves us. Even when we were enemies, he loved us. And that he's forgiven us. And by the Spirit, he is making us into his image. That's a word for all of us today, certainly a word for those being baptized and confirmed. A call to be like Jesus, because out of love for us, Jesus knows that our real self is obvious the more we look like him. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for those being baptized and confirmed and for the work that you have already done in their lives and the work you will continue to do. And we come before you recognizing that to be your disciple is not going to be easy, but we're going to look like you. The work begun here and finished in eternity. And we bless you for that mercy that you would take us and make us your followers out of love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As Bishop Neal situates himself for the baptismal liturgy and as the candidates come forward, I just want to encourage you to do what Bishop Neal asked us to do at the beginning of that service, which is just take a moment to consider what's the one word, what's the one nugget, what's the one um, uh, piece of truth in this sermon that the Lord has for you to take from this place as you seek to follow Jesus. In order to follow along, I encourage you to turn back to your leaflets and look at page four. And there will be a point where you make a promise to support these folks. Dearly beloved, scripture teaches us that we were all dead in our sins and trespasses, but we are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. 
Our Savior has said, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he commissioned the church to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is the outward sign of new birth in Christ, whereby we are united with him in his death and resurrection unto new life. And the candidates for holy baptism will now be presented, and they're to be presented one by one, and then I need to ask them each a question. Do you want to start over there? Okay, John. No, well, one at a time. <laughs> Have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Great. Okay. Have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Good. All right. However you want to do this. <laughs> to receive the sacrament of baptism. Great. Have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Great. Okay. That was going to baptize. Sorry. Have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Great. Have you already been baptized? No. Do you desire to be baptized? Great. Okay. Have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Okay. Caitlin, have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Great. Have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Wonderful. Have you already been baptized? Do you desire to be baptized? Wonderful. Okay. Now, this is to all of them. I, I want to add, on the, for understanding the Kogans, is that we have missing Kogans here who are who were stuck in Paris coming back from work uh, in Ukraine, uh, or in Poland, wrapped around the orphans in Ukraine, medical, a medical run. Uh, so they, I trust, are going to be watching online, we hope. But it's sad that they're not here. Uh, but uh, just for you to understand, you're only seeing part of the clan. All right, to those uh, being baptized, do you renounce, so get ready to, to answer uh, loudly. Uh, do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Together, I renounce. Do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God? Okay, we're now going to do an anointing. You'll hold that for me. That would be great. Okay. One of the traditions of the church is to understand that we're coming out of darkness into light, and it's a to liberate people from any demonic influence as well. So I'm going to be marking them. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And I'm asking for all of these things, the congregation to be praying along uh, as I'm praying. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, that one? I don't care. <laughs> Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We don't need him. Don't, we did. We did him last time. <laughs> Another time. So I thought. best work possible. Yeah. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we go back to questions. The first two you answer with, I do. This is the most important question of all. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior? Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Now, we can't do the next one without the Lord's help, so the answer is I will with God's help. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? I will. Now I ask those in the congregation to please stand. The reason we're having you stand is that you're making a promise, a vow before the Lord. If for some reason you're not ready to make this promise, please don't, uh, but your brothers and sisters will. And uh, I want a hearty we will, because this is a major commitment. Um, one person I had who was teaching children said, this is an, a possible commitment to teach vacation Bible school. <laughs> Seriously. You're promising to do whatever the Lord asks you to do to help these who are being baptized. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us all join together to proclaim our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the conscious Pilate. Crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 
I invite you now to stand or kneel um, in prayer for these candidates and for their life in Christ. We pray that these candidates may continue in the apostles' teaching and the fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. We beseech, we beseech you to hear us, us, good Lord. That they may walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which they have been called, ever growing in faith and all heavenly virtues. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That they may persevere in resisting evil and, whenever they fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord that they may proclaim by word and deed the good news of God in Jesus Christ to a lost and broken world. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That as living members of the body of Christ, they may grow up in every way into him who is the head. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That looking to Jesus, they may run with endurance the race set before them and at the last receive the unfading crown of glory. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And now we invite you to pray for these candidates, either silently or aloud. We think about how quickly children grow. It seems like every six months they need a new set of shoes or shirt or pants, um, and we pray that we would see that same kind of growth in these kids, that um, with each measure of time, with each school year, um, that they would be putting on a new measure of um, growth in life with you, um, of love for one another and love for neighbor, um, and that you'd be glorified in that growth. Amen. Father, I thank you for the radical example of John and Krista and of Nick and Keeley to their children of following Jesus. Um, but Lord, we, we want to pray for an extra measure of your spirit to be poured out on these children, Lord, that they would even surpass their parents, Lord, that they would be bright beams of light for the kingdom of God all the days of their lives. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, in your great mercy, you saved Noah and his family in the ark from the destruction of the flood, prefiguring the sacrament of holy baptism. Look mercifully upon these, your servants. Wash and sanctify them through your Holy Spirit, that they may be delivered from destruction and received into the ark of Christ's church, and being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope and rooted in love, they may pass through the turbulent floods of this troublesome world and come into the land of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of the bondage in Egypt and into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John in the river Jordan when the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are made regenerate by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who have come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit. May all who are here baptized be cleansed from sin, born again, and continue forever faithful in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. State your name. It's Simon Knightley Cogan. Simon Knightley, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't. <laughs> the earliest source we have on Christian baptism uh, says that it's preferable you baptize in cold water. <laughs> State your name. K. Jackson Cogan. K. Jackson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right, Kai, you got this. State your name. Kai Nicholas Cogan. Hi, Nicholas. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> State your name. Colia Rose Cogan. Colia Rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
How you doing? <laughs> a little cold? Yeah. All right. Say your name. Uh, Cassie Mary Conkin. Cassie Conkin, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Pastor John and I had the joy of really spending a lot of discipleship time with these teens this spring and just so impressed by their understanding of the faith and their desire to follow Jesus. All right. State your name. Kaylin Diane Cogan. Kaylin Diane, will you plug your nose? I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> And as part of their confirmation project, uh, I remember, some of you guys might remember that Carwin was collecting money for neglected people groups. So maybe we'll have to get her back on the case for that. She really has a heart for people throughout the world. Will you state your name? Carwin Chrysanthemum Kogan. Carwin Chrysanthemum, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You'll be all right. All right, Jamil, state your name. Jamil George Bow. Male George Bump, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, my. 
After crimson stain, be washed in white as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. this life up from the dead go praise the one who paid my debt and raise this life up from the dead go praise the one it's my debt and raise this life up from the dead go praise the one who my dad and raise this life up from the dead. Go praise the one who paid my dad and raise this life up from the dead. Go praise the one who paid my dad and raise this life up. So I'm going to seal as a mark of the baptism uh, those who've been baptized. Others are about to be confirmed, and they'll be uh, sealed at that point. I'm marking the sign of the cross using oil. Receive the sign of the cross as a token of your new life in Christ, in which you shall not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified, to fight bravely under his banner against the world, the flesh, and the devil, and to continue as his faithful servant to the end of your days. And now this is a prayer for all who've been baptized. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin, Receive them as your children by adoption, made them members of your holy church, and raise them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit, that they may enjoy everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the rest of this together. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the fellowship of the church. Can faith the faith of Christ crucify proclaim with his resurrection and share with us in his royal priesthood of all his people. So the congregation may be seated and I'll ask those who are being confirmed to there are two, is that right? Five. Five. Well, okay. Stay right there then. I'll stay. Let us now pray for those who have made an adult profession of faith and who seek the laying on of hands. Almighty and ever-living God, we beseech you to strengthen these, your servants, for witness and ministry, 
through the power of your Holy Spirit, daily increase in them your manifold virtues of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and the spirit of holy fear, now and forever. Amen. Just a word of explanation. They've all been baptized, but we understand in the life of the church that there comes a moment heading into adulthood where you're taking it on at a deeper level. And we're confirming that the promises made at baptism are going to be their lifestyle, but they're taking that responsibility on at a greater level in confirmation. So that's what's going on here. <laughs> Defend, O oh Lord, this your servant Caitlin with your heavenly grace. She may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Caitlin, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Carwin with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Together, amen. Carwin, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Simon with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Simon, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Kai with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Kai, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Colia with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Colia, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What you're not seeing is I'm shaking their hands. It's not just congratulations. It's a welcome into this part of the body of Christ and a welcome into their next phase of ministry. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be upon these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your holy word that they may faithfully serve you in this life and joyfully dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation, please stand and let's give all these folks a hand. That may be the most people that I was part of a baptism service in my entire ministry. 
It's really an amazing privilege to be here, isn't it? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet one another in the love of Christ. Let's be with you, Bishop. Good morning, Incarnation. We are extra rowdy this morning. That's just as it should be. What a great day. What a joyful day. Um, we're so glad you're here with us. If you're visiting, we're so glad that you came to, to join this celebration, uh, this marking, important marking of newness of life in these, in these children's lives. Um, uh, this is just, this is, this is a wonderful day. We, we really want you to stick around, celebrate with us. Um, Feel free to approach each one of these children and let them know how much you love them and you're going to be praying for them and supporting them in their life of Christ. Um, if you're visiting with us, we want to stay in touch with you. We want to get to know you. Um, please do stick around. We have a lovely coffee hour that's going to happen back here in the fellowship hall. So if you just circle around this building, um, you'll see uh, in, the, in the, the hall there, we've got uh, drinks and cake set up. Um, kids have their own table right there by the playground so they can play. So please do stick around. Um, I'm here to give a couple of announcements, but really, if you want to know what's going on in the life of this church throughout the week, please do um, check the emails that you get from me every Tuesday. Um, if you aren't getting those, you can fill one of these out. They're in the pew in front of you, and you can put that in the um, offering basket as it comes by in just a moment. I just want to flag a couple of things that we have going on during the summer. Um, we will have a Wednesday night Bible study every Wednesday night in here at 7 p.m., um, we have fun things like um, watching and discussing The Chosen, the hit series, TV series The Chosen. That's on Tuesday nights. We have Ultimate Frisbee on Thursday nights at Tom Brown Park. So a lot of good things. If you want to know those details, find me or uh, sign up for the email. Um, I'm going to ask Taylor to come up and make a couple of final announcements for us. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, first, I just want to just give you a little extra special urge to come on Wednesday night to study the Word of God with us. We're always studying the passage that we're just about to preach on. And so if you haven't been on Wednesdays at 7, please come. Um, I, wanna, I do want to give glory to God. I know Bishop Neal said something about it briefly, um, but for, for the overturning of Roe v. Wade um, as just a really important moment um, for the sake of justice for all, um, especially those who um, can't speak for themselves, the unborn. It does bring a lot of difficulties and complexities that the church is going to have to step up to and and be the hands and feet of Christ, uh, but we give glory to God. And uh, in connection with that, one of the things that the church is going to need to do um, all the more, the church has always been involved in this, but all the more is care for orphans, okay? And, um, and uh, um, you're about to hear a video announcement uh, from Kenley, who is one of the Kogans who's been over helping uh, Ukrainian orphans get them out of Ukraine. And this summer, um, all through till the end of um, August, they're doing camps for these orphans, um, in particular uh, the ones who have been evacuated into Germany. And, um, and I asked her, could you use some extra people, you know, or would we just be in the way? And she said, no, we can definitely use people. So maybe some of you guys who are like between jobs or you have some vacation time or whatever might want to like link arms with a friend and be like, we want to go over there and be the hands and feet of Christ. And so let's, let's hear from Kenley 
uh, who's on the ground over there. Good morning, friends. I was really hoping and planning to be home with you this morning, but as you can see, I'm still in Germany and things not quite go according to plan. Um, we just finished up our first week of summer camp um, for kids who have been evacuated from Ukrainian orphanages to Europe um, to safety. And it was such a blessing, um, getting to love on these kids, getting to share the gospel with them, to build relationships with them, to dance and sing, um, do art projects, um, build with Legos, run around outside, just uh, provide some kind of joy and um, normal childhood experience for these kids who have lost so much. Um, this particular group doesn't even have an orphanage to go back to um, at this point, so mm. it was a huge blessing to spend this time with them. Um, also, we were able to use so much of the donations um, that you all lovingly sent um, with my brother earlier um, this year. Uh, we were so grateful. Um, toys, snacks, blankets, so much. Um, games, such a blessing, and we're so thankful. Um, I also wanted to extend an invitation, just in case any of you have been feeling led or possibly interested in joining us in some of this work. Um, we are in need of a few more pairs of hands in order to make um, camp happen for more groups of kids. This group was a, um, a smaller group. We have a couple of other larger groups of kids that have asked, um, their caregivers have asked us to do camps. We're trying to figure out what's logistically possible. Um, and if you're interested in coming for, you know, a week, um, even just three days, and loving on kids, uh, helping us to just really care for them well, um, build relationships, share the gospel, um, reach out to me or someone who can get you in touch with me. Um, and I would love to talk more with you about what that might look like and just share more details about kind of um, what this all is and uh, answer any questions that you might have. But again, um, we're so thankful for your faithfulness and prayer and support. Um, truly, as I've told many of you, your prayers have been carrying us through. And the Lord is so good. And we're so, so glad to see all that he's doing. Um, but I miss you all. And I can't wait to see you when I get home, um, hopefully soon. Amen. And I've Good been told friends. that the, uh, oh, right, yeah, give her a hand. Um, this morning, but as you can see, I'm still in Germany and things did not quite go according to plan. And give the Lord Jesus a hand. We, uh, we, um, we uh, as, as you may know, uh, Kenley, her father, Nick, and others have, have been helping uh, bring hundreds of orphans out of Ukraine. Um, and uh, some of you guys might be hearing that and be like, man, like she's become a hero in faith to me. You know, and I, like I'm not a hero. I can't, you know, could it possibly be me that the Lord would use over there? I don't have anything to bring. If you're ready to go over there to listen, to love, to, to play, to pray, the Lord can use you. All right. So, uh, so please, uh, if you're able to make this trip and, uh, and, and be among these kids. And so if you want to come and uh, actually Eden, you're going too, right? Eden's about to leave pretty soon. So if you would like to go, uh, um, please let me know or let Keely know or let Eden know. We'll also send out a link in an email um, very soon, okay? Um, and then I know this is, this is a, a, a long service, all right? Just kind of linger with us a little bit. Um, I, I just want to say a goodbye to Joe. Where's Joanna and Jacob? I'm going to say, we're gonna, we got to say goodbye to them. Praise the Lord that the Lord has uh, provided a... a, a, a doctoral program opening uh, for Jacob to get his PhD, but we're really sad that, and then we're going to be losing Joanna again. I mean, you just came back. So, uh, no, we love you guys. Uh, thank you for all the ways that you've blessed and served this community. Let me say a quick word of prayer for you. And would you stand and just maybe you guys could pray with me as I pray for them and we come to Holy Communion. Father in heaven, we thank you for Joanna and Jacob. Lord, we thank you for the unique ways uh, in which you've blessed them and gifted them. Thank you for how they've served, um, uh, especially children and tech and behind the scenes in this community and made many friendships. Lord, we pray that you would go before them uh, as they transition to this next season of their life. Bless them to be a blessing, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you're a visitor and you're wondering whether you can receive Holy Communion, if you're a baptized follower of Jesus, it doesn't matter about denomination, you're welcome to see, receive communion at this church. There's more instructions later on in your service sheet. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
remain standing. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him and bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
could remember no wrongs we have done of this and all knowing he counts not their sum thrown into a sea without bottom or shore since they are many his mercy is more patient would wait as we constantly what Father so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost we stood near the death we could never afford our sins they are many his mercy is the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow
silence a moment asking the Lord to show us one thing in terms of obedience one area where we need to live and think differently so that we can be more like him so let us pray thankfully together the post-communion prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. This is a special blessing. It's really a commissioning and a bless blessing tied to the confirmation service, but it's true for all of us all the time. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, and fight the good fight of faith that you may finish your course with joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
dismisses us, I just want to say, um, when we don't have a drummer, I think we're going to need to have a clapping workshop. <laughs> Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Ah, that's it. Yeah.